What's the one thing a doctor wishes you knew about sexual lubricants? I'm uh, Kathy Vertulli from TheIntimacyDojo.com, and I'm here with Shauna Correa, um, who is a doctor at uh, the BC Center for Sexual Medicine at Vancouver General Hospital. And thank you so much for being here, Shauna. I think it's so exciting to get to talk to talk about lubes with someone who's a sex doctor. Like most people, most doctors don't know a lot about this. So what is the one thing that you wish people knew about sexual lubricants? Um, well, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be here. And I guess the main thing that I want people to know about sexual lubricants is that not all sexual lubricants are equal, that there are different classes of them. And additionally, that there are some types of lubricants that have ingredients in them that can actually be quite harmful for people's very, very sensitive tissues. Yeah. Um, so kind of what I was hoping to accomplish with my talk at ConvergeCon is to introduce the different types of lubricants, introduce the different types of practices where you might choose one lubricant over another lubricant, and review some of the potential harms that could happen with some lubricants on that are commercially available. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that way, individuals and folks in the community can really choose and make really health conscious decisions about what they're putting inside their body and what they're using to optimize their, their sexual pleasure. Yeah, I love that. That's, that's wonderful. And I love the top, the title of your talk is Keeping It Wet and Wonderful, A Guide to Sexual Lubricants from a Sex Doctor. Um, so what is one of the things that you would recommend? Some people watching this will never be able to get to ConvergeCon, sadly, because it's an amazing, amazing conference. Um, what, what's one thing that people should look out for if they're looking at, like, what, are, what is one of the ingredients that could actually be harmful? Yeah, so some of the more common ones that can be harmful are uh, parabens and glycerins. They're often added to the water-based lubricants. Part of the problem with that is they can increase the osmolality of the product. And when you have a high osmolality product that's close to very thin tissues, it can actually create little micro tears in the, in the tissues. And therefore you have to worry about increased transmission of viruses and increased rates of, of STI infections potentially. Mm -hmm. So those yeah. are some of the things I really worry about. If you are dealing with somebody who's postmenopausal and their tissues are even more sensitive and more fragile, then you have to additionally worry about all these extra uh, potential harms to the tissues. That's yeah. That's the whole point is we're trying to add lube to soothe the tissues, not not tear them slightly. Um, okay. Yeah. So what, how did you get interested in this whole topic? Like, I, did you just wake up one day and say, "Oh, I'm going to study this"? Um, well. So as, as a sex doctor, like my job is to day in, day out, we work with people to try to optimize their sexual pleasure. Um, I ex work with a lot of individuals who experience pain with mm -hmm. vaginal penetration. So very, very common condition called provoked vestibular Um And part of that is helping patients optimize pleasurable sensations. And so sometimes we recommend using lubricants. Um, but when I first started practicing, you know, in this, this area of medicine, um, I didn't really know, I would just say, just go buy whatever is available in the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. And I started hearing back from women, they'd say, oh, it burns and it stings. And I was like, okay, I think I need to be more conscientious about what I'm recommending to my patients. So I don't just say, oh, go buy whatever lube is available. Um, so then I started to research and started looking at the, the medical journals that go through exactly what all the different components are and what the potential pros and cons are to patients' tissues. Um, and it really also led me down the path of not looking just at water-based lubricants, but also looking at oil-based lubricants. Mm -hmm. And my personal favorite lubricant to recommend for people who are not using latex condoms, so that's an important caveat, mm -hmm. um, is coconut oil, so extra virgin coconut oil. It has a lot of anti-inflammatory properties, antifungal properties, antibacterial properties. So It's a lot of fun, too. I love how it melts like against the skin and... Exactly, and you can trust that whatever you're applying to your skin is going to be moisturizing and soothing and, and just really help provide the barrier required um, while also smelling nice and that. Yes, I, mean, I, have, I have found out that if you use a lot of it, you should probably not have your favorite sheets on the bed. Yes, <laughs> so we often recommend maybe putting a little towel down, mm -hmm. maybe not wearing your most nicest underwear, yeah. um, unless that's part of the fun for you. So. Yeah. No, 
No, it's one of my favorite favorite play times is that. We'll put the link for your, your practice down below because I think some people may want to find out more because there's not a lot of sex doctors out there. Um, before we wrap up, what is, uh, you're going to be at ConvergeCon speaking and what is, what are you excited about being there? Why are you, why are you looking forward to it? Um, I think ConvergeCon is a fantastic conference. It really is coming up from, from sort of grassroots community individuals who want to create some change and sex positivity. Um, and I think it's important, um, well, A, I've been attending it as an attendee in the past. Um, I'm very passionate about sex positivity. Um, and I'm just really glad that this year I had the opportunity to actually present and talk and share some of my knowledge mm -hmm. with people in the community who might otherwise not be able to access. So, you know, if you're not coming as my patient, you might not be able to access uh, some of the, the information I can provide. Yeah, I really appreciate it, Shauna. Thanks for your generosity and the time. And if you're watching this and you have questions, Go ahead and leave the, leave comments below. I will try to get them to Shauna, and if she has time to fit it in, maybe we'll do another video or two answering the questions. So, again, thanks so much, Shauna, and I can't wait to see you pretty soon. Yes, thanks so much, Kathy. Bye. Bye.